call this meeting to order, 7 p.m. It's a special council meeting on uh, Monday, the uh, 14th of August, uh, 2017. Um, before calling this meeting to order, I have a question for Mr. Dixon. Mr. Dixon, the press has noted confusion surrounding the scheduling of tonight's hearings. At the July 24th special meeting, a vote was taken in public to hold a special meeting on August 7th. There was no meeting on August 7th, and tonight's agenda contains items that are different than what was on, what was to be on the August 7th meeting. So just so the public is clear, is tonight's meeting a continuation of the meeting scheduled for August 7th, or is this a completely separate and unrelated meeting? Mayor Susowitz, this is a completely separate and unrelated meeting. Thank you. Okay, um, I'm gonna call the meeting to order. Uh, Madam Clerk, can we have the roll, please? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Councilmember Davies? Here. Councilmember Genoway? Present. Councilmember Jennings? Present. Mayor Pro Tem Minigar? Present. And Mayor Slusowitz? Here. Thank you, we have a quorum. And again, for those who didn't hear, Mr. Dixon, this is a completely in separate and unrelated meeting to the July 24th special meeting and what was supposed to be on August 7th. I just wanna make sure that was clear. Um, let's stand for the pledge. Please place your hand over your heart. Let's praise this great nation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We're gonna have public communications, but just like the last couple of special meetings that we've had, we're gonna do it in three parts. Um, there's a gold colored request to speak form. They're over here in the back to our right, to your left. And um, if anyone wishing to address the city council can please fill one of these out. You'll have three minutes to speak. And uh, please hand it over to our city clerk, uh, Eileen Gomez. And again, as I mentioned, we're gonna have the first open public communications, which we'll cover right now, is on any subject that is not on this agenda. If it's not on the agenda, uh, let the uh, clerk know it. The second public communications will be for the first item, which is dealing with the policy of whether or not the city should have a policy. And then the, the third public communications will fall under the resolution uh, that we're here for tonight regarding the removal. So again, anyone requesting to speak, please hand it over to Ms. Gomez. Um, Madam Gomez, is there any other public communications for this uh, just in general topics? Okay, none, thank you very much. So let's get on to the first item of business, City Attorney Dixon. Um, do you wanna cover the staff report for this resolution? Yes, Mayor. Mayor Slusowitz, members of the council. The first item is resolution of the city council of the city of Laguna Niguel, repealing resolution number 2005-818 and establishing procedures and provisions for the appointment of the mayor and the mayor pro tem. Attorney Dixon, I apologize. Can you move the mic a little bit closer? I think it's a little hard to hear. Thank you, appreciate it. The first item, we were requested, my office was requested to uh, consider the possible uh, removal of a mayor of a general law city. And uh, I did some research and thinking about it, and it occurred to me that uh, the question was whether or not a mayor could be removed at will, mayor serve at the pleasure of the council. And uh, it was my opinion that that, in fact, was the case. But I, realizing the seriousness of this matter, I decided to uh, request assistance from outside counsel, uh, the law firm of Burke, Williams, and Sorensen. And they agreed with that position, but they believed it should be uh, the resolution that we have governing uh, appointments 
selection of mayor and mayor pro tem should be amended to make it absolutely clear that the mayor and mayor pro tem serve at the pleasure of the uh, council. The uh, resolution, if adopted, would uh, amend the existing resolution and actually replace the existing resolution to make that clear. Uh, I'd like to mention one thing that was brought up to me earlier today. Paragraph 9 of the proposed resolution would basically provide that if the mayor is removed, the mayor pro tem would serve until the council selects his successor, his or her successor. A concern was raised that uh, if the mayor was removed in, say, the last couple of months of his or her term, and uh, the mayor pro tem uh, became mayor, the mayor pro tem would potentially only serve a very short period of time as mayor and then would be subject to uh, election. Uh, I bring this to the attention of the council to see if the council has any interest in providing for a different procedure than what's uh, set forth in the proposed resolution. Okay, and as I understood, it was the removal of the mayor or the mayor pro tem as part of this. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but that's what I read. Is that correct? Yes, it applies to both the mayor and the mayor pro tem. Okay, and this isn't just for tonight. This is a permanent resolution for the for the future. Well, it would go into effect upon adoption. Correct. Okay, thank you. All right, open it up for council comments. My only comment with respect to the uh, the procedure was that um, it seems prudent to uh, do it in the manner that's suggested by the resolution. I think that we can still have a vote uh, when it comes time for the the normal term, which would either be in November or December, depending on its odd or even year. So I would support the resolution as drafted. I make a motion to approve. I'll second it, and I also go ahead. I'll second it. And I also um, agree here with Councilmember Jennings. I believe that when it comes time to the appointment, we can make that decision at that time. Genoa, you got a comment? Uh, yes, I just, I believe that uh, when we discussed the policy of this resolution, I stated that I think that this resolution we should have had in place from the beginning of cityhood. And it's common sense to have a procedure to select, that when we have a procedure to select a mayor to serve at the pleasure of the council, that we also have a procedure in place to change it if it is the pleasure of the council. So I believe that um, this is something that we should have had all along. And I also think that we may want to look at our other resolutions and see what needs to be updated. Mayor Pro Tem? Well, uh, I agree with my colleagues with regard to what has been presented. Right. Well, notwithstanding the reason we're here this evening, but I think it's a worthy policy discussion for us to have as a council. My question to my colleagues is whether uh, we would also be wise to include safeguards so a sitting mayor is not removed willy-nilly every time the political winds shift or the mayor finds himself in the minority. But I'll call the question. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? None. There we go. Moves us to item two. Mr. Dixon, before we begin, will you be pro providing the public and this council a status report on the investigation into my conduct as mayor, which was called for at the July 24th special meeting as being conducted by the law firm of Burke, Williams, and Sorensen? Would you like a status report? I asked if you were going to be providing one. Certainly, I'm prepared to do that right now. Mayor Sluswitz, members of the, uh, the council. As I mentioned earlier regarding the first item, I had uh, retained Burke Williams and Sorensen to help me on the uh, question concerning the statutes involved with uh, the removal of the mayor. 
that was on approximately July 15th, July 17th. Subsequent to that, there was an agenda report with uh, various items. This was on uh, July 24. The items included the investigation into the mayor's conduct and included uh, looking at the West Cove Arborist issue. It included looking at the AUP, Agreed Upon Procedures issue. Uh, that was approved by the council that uh, had those directions, four to one. Again, on the 24th. Subsequent to that, on approximately August 2nd, the city's management services director contacted Kelly Trainer at the law firm of Burke Williams and Sorensen. The purpose for that contact was to assist in the investigation. She was apparently on vacation for a week. We contacted her again. She uh, apparently talked to uh, other attorneys in her office. There was a question of a conflict of interest. And as I understand it, Burke Williams uh, was of the opinion that they could help in the investigation, they could, but they could not undertake the investigation itself. That would be a conflict of interest on their part. And so we asked Burke Williams to uh, try to locate appropriate uh, law firms that could conduct the investigation. They had a list of about seven or eight, as I recall. They talked to some of them, and uh, eventually they recommended to uh, myself the, the law firm of Ellis, I believe it's pronounced Blucher, and, and makes us, I may be mispronouncing some of those words. I just received, at the end of last week, a, a written proposal to uh, conduct the workplace investigation. Um, I believe I probably have sufficient authority to sign the proposal, but I believe it would be better practice to take that to the city council, which I intend to do at the earliest opportunity. Um, so far, the city has identified about nine people, nine people who have allegedly received hostile, demeaning, or inappropriate uh, conduct and several other witnesses. So we have identified some people, we've talked to them, but we have not yet taken any formal statements and, and will not do that until that law firm that I mentioned has been approved and starts the investigation. Has any questions regarding that? Great, thank you. My council colleagues will indulge me for just a moment. The greatest trick some members of this council ever played was convincing the public that tonight's proceeding was about finding the truth. Facts and the law were not gonna get in the way of a backroom deal cut in mid-July. Defeat is not bitter unless you swallow it. You must be willing to look bad to achieve good. The story of my tenure as mayor has a happy ending because the taxpayers have been alerted to hundreds of thousands of dollars of overspending. If I don't step down as mayor, it legitimized this hasty sham removal process may have the legal consequence of ratifying prior Brown Act violations, thereby allowing certain decisions to avoid public scrutiny. Accordingly, I will return to the position of a full voting member of the city council for which I was duly elected. In accordance with the government code, I'm providing the city clerk with my written resignation effective immediately as it's tendering. Thank you for coming.
the meeting of the City Council of Laguna Niguel is brought to order. Serving the office of mayor is the highest honor which can be bestowed upon any resident city of our great city. I'm humbled to serve as a public servant leader at this critical juncture in our beautiful city. I, ha I have served the city for over 21 years with the highest honesty, integrity, and transparency. In my personal life, I, I deal with a lot of other cities. There are 484 cities in the great state of California. Our city, Laguna Niguel, never made the headline news. At this very, very critical juncture, again, in the history of our city since the inception, 1989, We've never be been in this position. I have known all my colleagues. I have known a lot of residents, a lot of citizens in this great city. And I'm pretty saddened because of the event of the chain of all these events that I'm, I'm almost speechless. I didn't want to be in this position at this juncture. I have worked so hard. to be the mayor of the city, but not at this time. City Attorney Dixon, would you like me to go ahead with the ceremonial oath of office? to administer to the mayor pro tem so he can conduct the meeting? Yes, that would be appropriate. Okay, thank you. We can do the ceremonies any time. This is a very difficult situation for this city. I moved from New York to California in 1989, Orange County, because I found the most beautiful city in this great country. I thought, it may happen in other states, in New York, in Illinois, not to have anything against those states, but not in Orange County, not in this beautiful paradise called Laguna Niguel. By the way, I'm not reading my, my script because I wasn't prepared for this. What we've done in this great city since in inception Anywhere I go in California, they envy us. Oh, Laguna Niguel Way, very special city. Oh, you guys are lucky, it's a paradise. We love to live there, but we can't afford it. Well, because we're successful people, all of us have worked hard to get here. To own a home in this great city is the highest honor. It's not a typical city in America. All the residents, all the citizens are involved. When I was running for my election some time back, everybody was saying, don't worry about it, you got my vote. Because we trust you. And at this juncture, at this very difficult time, we need to get together. We need to be cohesive. We need to move forward. This is from the bottom of my heart. I'm not a politician. I just want to make sure that everybody knows that. I'm a public servant leader. I want nothing but the best for this city that I have found that happened to be Paradise America. And we do anything with my colleagues, and I need their support to bring it back, to take it back, to move forward. Rather than me, as for one now, as the newly to be appointed, elected, doesn't matter how you label that, to be the mayor of this city, I have a lot of responsibilities on my shoulder. But don't worry, because at Harvard University, they trade me well. <laughs> I went to Harvard University Executive Education Program, John F. Kennedy School of Government. 
They taught us about transparency, integrity, leadership in the government. Not everything's about money. Not everything's about status. Not everything's about position. It's just to serve your community. So that when I see residents at Costco, they come to me, great city, we're very happy about the city. Oh, we move from Long Beach, we move from X, Y, and Z cities. All of us have common goals and objectives in this great city. And I'm gonna be a part of it, but I'm gonna work 10 times more than before to assure that we sustain the beautiful quality of life that we have enjoyed since, in, in, since its inception in 1989. As I said, I'm speechless because I'm not going by my script. This is a very difficult time in our city. I want to make sure that we have excellent staff. We have a beautiful city hall that we paid cash, unlike other cities, that they had to issue bonds, not mentioning any names, Newport Beach, or other cities. <laughs> With your tax money, we're going to watch every dime, every dollar that you have spent so that it doesn't go to a wrong way. We have moral obligation to make sure that any auditing that has been performed in this great city to be checked so that we have a transparent government. We're not like other old cities that they do behind the scenes deals and wheels. I just want to make sure that I assure you that at this juncture, from this point on, as the new person, this position, I serve you, the citizens of Laguna Niguel, nobody else. The citizens go first, again, so that we bring transparency. I work very closely with all the department heads, with my colleagues, number one to start with, the city council, to make sure that the mistakes that were made, they would be rectified. We improve the system, the procedures, if any, rather than pointing at you know, staff members or other people. That's not my personality. I want to move forward. I want to make sure that we do nothing but the best for this city. First class cities require first class public servant leaders that are highly educated. They understand the system. They understand the process so that it would be a bulletproof system. And honestly, my doors are always open. I listen. Please call me. Leave a message for me. I'll be more than happy to sit down with you and go over all the documents. I don't want to hide anything from anyone. I want one thing, to sustain the beautiful quality of life that we have enjoyed in this city. That's why we live here. I don't want to go through all these you know, news headlines. It bothers me, honestly. I'm not going by my scripts. I have something else. I'm just presenting to you who I am. At this juncture, I'm taking over the leadership of this beautiful city council to work with my colleagues to move forward. If there are any mistakes, we're going to repair that. We're going to fix it. If somebody did anything wrong, I'll assure you that we're going to respond to it. We're going to find out. So with all that said, I know this is a very difficult time here. This is not a typical ceremony that I would be standing here and I would be, you know, conducting the typical thing. But I assure all of you, we're going to put this city back to the way it was. First class city with the best citizens that we have. Everyone is involved because citizens care in this city. The result of that is me getting elected. I'm not a politician. I just, I've loved the city for so many years, 21 years that I've served as a planning commissioner for eight years, 10 years as a chairman, you know, transportation commissioner, and in a lot of other capacities. Now, at this juncture, I happen to be serving the city as the mayor is the highest honor that I'm going to cherish for the rest of my life. For the city, I just want to make sure that we take it back, 
And with the support of my colleagues, we're going to move forward, and we are going to make this year a banner year for the city. And again, thank you very much for taking time from your busy schedule by coming here. If my council colleagues have any comments, I start with uh, Councilwoman Lori Davies to my right, please. Thank you. Um, I couldn't have said it any better, Mayor. And um, you have my complete support. Know that I know myself and the other council members will be here. And I think that's really what this is all about. We want to move forward. That's the bottom line. We are very proud to be members here. And again, we aren't politicians. I'm a wedding planner, you know? So, but that, you know, I'm here to represent you, and that's why I ran in 2012 and 2016. Being able to serve you, to represent you, is why I'm here. And we do the right things. And unfortunately, when things like this happen, we don't have a choice. We have to bring them out to the public. This isn't something that can be discussed behind closed doors. And so it was a very hard and difficult decision to bring this up. But the last thing I wanted to do is have a libel lawsuit because we didn't listen to the different things that we had coming forth. Know that we will continue the investigation and we'll make sure that whatever the findings are, we will make sure that you're aware of it. But again, I don't want to see a black eye in this city, but black eyes heal and we'll heal and we move forward. And I continue to make a promise, and I thank the council as well, that I will not use the media for my own benefit. I'm not going to use city events for my own benefit. The facts are the facts, and when it's time to get the facts, we'll do it up here, and this is where it's supposed to be. I don't want to see our city disgraced. I don't want to see council members going at each other in the media. We are better than that. We are Laguna Niguel. And that behavior isn't acceptable to me. So I thank you. And I'm going to tell you, we're going to need your support as well. This is draining. I'm sure you can see it on all of us. It's draining. It's exhausting. We want to be able to do the work we're supposed to be doing, the work that you asked us to do. So again, I thank you. And I, I, you have my complete support. Thank you, madam. <laughs> my colleague, Councilwoman Elaine Genoway, please. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we came to this meeting tonight with heavy hearts. And as Councilwoman Davies has said, sorry. It's been very draining on us. It's been very emotional to see our city go through this. But you elected us to lead, and as your leaders, we need to also address any dysfunction that was interfering with city business. Because there's wonderful things that take place in this city, and that's what we should be focusing our energy and our city staff efforts on. So, um, you know, we, we work closely together. All of your council members have the best interests of the city at heart, and we will continue to do that. And again, we need your support. We know that we are looking forward to reviewing the processes and addressing anything that needs to be addressed so that we don't find ourselves in this spot again. I'm going to keep my comments very short, but I do want to thank all of you who are here tonight for participating in the public process of our meetings. And it is difficult to do some of this in public as we have had to do. But that's what city government is about, to be transparent so you know what your elected leaders are doing, what we're discussing, and so because we are answerable to you. You are our boss. You are our employers. But all of you who came here tonight after work or after soccer practice or running the kids around, thank you very much. And you know what? We have meetings here the first and third Tuesday of the month, so I hope to see these chambers filled from now on. But Mayor Minigar, please know that you have my full support, and I look forward to working with you on the reviews that we do need to do. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Councilman John Mark Jennings. Mr. Mayor, thank you very much. Um, everyone else has cried. There's no chance I'm going to get through this and not do it, so I'm just going to brace you for that. Um, uh, 
You know, I completely agree with what you said, Mr. Mayor. Uh, it really touched my heart. You and I have talked many times about life and government and policy and things, and I know how you feel, and I look forward to working with you, and it means a lot to me that you're at the helm right now, so I appreciate that. For, um, for everyone who's here, thank you. Um, it's difficult on this side of the dais, I promise you. Uh, it's also difficult on that side. Uh, your voices have been heard, and we are in a room where some people agree with others and some people don't, and that's okay. That's part of our process. I invite it. I welcome it. Um, as your public servant, you have to know that you have people who are on this side of the dais listening to you, and I can promise you that I've heard you. I've heard every word that you've said. I've read what you've said in the, the newspaper and, and online, uh, and I take all of that to heart. I had to promise my wife I would stop reading those immediately before trying to go to sleep um, because it doesn't help, but uh, it, it is important. You know, the events that gave rise to tonight, me, tonight's meeting has obviously saddened me, but they've also disturbed me, and they've sort of renewed in me a sense that I've always known and really sort of gave rise to my reason for ever wanting to sit on this side of a dais. You know, I view it as our jobs as city council members to make it our responsibility to make sure that the trust and the well-being of our residents, our businesses, and our constituents are our most important goals. You need to know, and you certainly deserve, that your city council supports you. It's important, and we certainly do. You know, as a longtime resident here in Laguna Niguel, I've always known that the most important aspect of our community is you, the residents. And it's the, you guys are the people with the integrity who've always focused on doing and making sure that the right thing happens. You are truly the leaders and we are truly your servants. I hope it always comes across that way and I hope you always treat us that way because as the mayor has said, our doors remain open, our phones remain on, and your voice is important to me. I'm sure it's important to all of us. Call, write, we will respond. You have our, you have our ear and you will always have it that way. You know, when residents take the difficult step of voicing their concerns, and they did, and I applaud them for doing it, uh, you can agree or disagree with it, but I promise you it's a hard thing to do. Speaking truth to power is one of the best, most difficult things that you can do in a society. Stand at that podium and try it sometime. It's hard, and if you've done it, you know. It's also hard on this side of the podium to listen to it because I have to listen intently with an open mind. And while I may have preconceived ideas about what should happen, my job is to be a legislator, to decide what's in your best interest and cast a vote that I think that you would support. And I can promise you we've tried to do that. But you know, listening alone's not enough. We have to, even when we're faced with the mere appearance of a problem, we have to step in. That's our job. You asked us to do that. You voted on us to take care of business. And when the business is hard, it lays on the five shoulders that you see up here. We're not trying to shirk that. We don't need your applause. We just need to make sure that you know that we're taking care of it. You know, we received what only could be described as troubling complaints. And I'm not gonna get into them because I think it's imprudent to do so at this point. But I want you to know that I've taken great care and understanding and I hopefully exercise some discretion in reading every bit of it. You want us to be open and transparent, and part of that is reading what you write and what they read, we wrote, both for and against. You know, this isn't a courtroom, and we're not having a trial, and we haven't received evidence. This is a legislative process. We have been trying to do, and this agenda reflects tonight something that is not intended to be, you know, a, a decision in a trial. It is a legislative action to put this on the agenda tonight. It ended up a little bit differently than some of us would have thought, but it also may have been reparative. I, something Councilmember Genoway said one or two meetings back has stuck with me. And she asked the question, and I pondered it a little bit, is this going to be corrective or punitive? And I think it needs to start with being corrective. We need to start with the healing. And I thank you for saying that. It meant a lot because uh, it got me thinking about it. But my job, our job, is to put this back together. And I promise you, Mr. Mayor, you've got my shoulder because I'm going to be right next to you trying to help you with that. Um, 
you know, it's been said that when something's going wrong, somebody always starts quoting Lincoln. So let me be the first. <laughs> you know, nearly all men can stand some adversity, but if you want to test a man's character, give him some power and see what happens. I thought on that one for about an hour last night, so thank you. I believe with every core of my being that the work of public officials on behalf of our residents and our taxpayers deserve the highest possible commitment, the most ethical approach that we have, and that those fortunate enough to be entrusted with this public office should treat those jobs as the sacred trust with the voters that they are. If you're frustrated with the negative atmosphere that permeates all levels of government, I invite you to join me and be a force for some change right here at home. Collectively, we can do something to stop it in our backyard. It all starts locally right here, and we can stand up for what's right, and anything less is just not acceptable. And we as your elected officials must project the best possible face that we have. You know, we have an investigation that's ongoing. I was going to say some more about that, but I think I'll let it pass. Um, it's important to do. I think you asked us to do it. I think we decided to do it, and it's important to move on. Investigations can be divisive, or they can be informative. We have one of the best opportunities now to make a change. For better or for worse, for right or wrong, we have a process that's going on right now to locate a new city manager, to locate a new assistant city manager, to go through and find the absolute best, the absolute brightest that we have to put in our city, to make a real change, to do something positive, to bring stability, to make sure that our staff feels connected to their government, to make the, sure that the citizens feel connected to their staff and to this council. We have an opportunity right now and I promise you, on behalf of myself and the rest of my colleagues, you will be pleased with what we do, and I invite you to participate in that process because it is so very important. We are also celebrating anniversaries on the 30th year of becoming a city this next year, if you can imagine. What an unbelievable opportunity to set the course ahead, to do something right, to make government what it ought to be, your servant, and trying to do the right thing at all times. It's the simplest of concepts. We all smile when we hear it because it is the right thing to do. It's what we all want. And I'm gonna do it, and I'm inviting my colleagues to do it, and most importantly, I'm inviting you. For those of you in the room, for those of you who are watching, for those of you within the sound of my voice, uh, let's work together. Uh, there is no room for divisiveness. This city's far too wonderful. We have too many great things going on, and I, for one, will help. My hopes and prayers are with all of you. I ask that yours be with us as well. While this truly may be a dark moment in our lives, from this darkness we will rise and we will shine and its brilliance will be brighter than it was before. I thank you sincerely and I ask for uh, your blessings on us all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilman Jennings. Uh, at this juncture, I wanted to consult with our city attorney, Mr. Terry Dixon. What is the protocol for people, people's request to speak with regard to those two specific items on the agenda tonight? Do we disregard them, or we should go through the process? No, I, if they've put in a request to speak, it seems to me that they should be given the opportunity to speak if they would like to. Very good, sir. I just want to... Make sure any person wishing to address the City Council on any matter, whether or not it appears on this agenda, is required to complete a gold-colored request to speak form, which are available on the counter near the door. Please submit the completed form to our Madam Cleric prior to being heard by this City Council. Each individual would be allowed 
to speak for three minutes. No action shall be taken on any items that does not appear to be on the agenda for tonight unless my colleagues in the city council would make a determination that an emergency exists or that there is a need for immediate action and the need to take action came to the attention of the city subsequent to the agenda being heard. With that said, I do have six requests. Madam Clerk, do we have any more? No, Mayor, there were no others submitted. Very good. The first one, Mrs. Donna Mulvaney. My name is Donna Mulvaney. I live at 23862 Windmill Lane, Laguna Nigel, and I waiver my right to make a statement with the resignation of Jerry Sluzowitz. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for coming to the city council meeting tonight. Mr. John Aldrich. Hi, uh, my name's John Ulrich, 30412 Northampton. <clears throat> I spent hours and hours thinking what I was going to say tonight, and I'm thankful I don't have to say it now. Um, but I have to tell you, <clears throat> there's so many people in this city that love the city, that have a, a total respect for all of you, city employees, the city council, and talking to so many people in the last few months, um, you have the full support of everyone that I know. And uh, just watching the emotion up there even solidifies that for me. Uh, Mr. Mayor, thank you so much for what you said. But you have hundreds of people supporting you because we all know the, the level of integrity and character that you've shown ever since I've known all four of you. So um, you have a lot of support out there. We'll do anything we can to help. Just count on it, thanks. Thank you very much. <laughs> Ms. Anito Mandy. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Dave McDaniel. Council members. Uh, my name is Doug McDaniel. I live at 27741 Daisy Field Drive. Um, a couple things. I, I, I have a question, and that is, am I to understand that Mr. Schleswig has stepped down from the mayor position, but he remains a council member? Is that correct? Um, so uh, one comment I want to make before I forget it is that I believe there's a bit of a red herring that's been thrown into this discussion, and that is the issue with uh, West Coast Arborist uh, as, uh, having the luxury of serving as a uh, board member in the San Joaquin Hills community for the last 10 years. Uh, I know that a large budget is uh, administered with uh, less than great precision, and to s I, I think our tree trimming budget is 50 or $60,000 a year, and we're only 200 acres. Uh, the city of Laguna Niguel to uh, only pay $300,000 a year is remarkable to me. So uh, I have faith in the city staff, uh, but I would say that it would be important for the council to have a full accounting and a full report on that uh, situation just to make sure that all the, all the T's are crossed. Uh, I will say that about seven years ago, I did have one encounter, and I don't know the man, uh, I, I, he only came to a board meeting and I had a single encounter with him and I, I know this may not be a popular thing to say, uh, but it was very, very negative. And I will just say that the encounter took me back to fourth grade where I felt like there would be physical violence if I didn't go the way that he was suggesting that I should behave as a board member and how I should decide on a particular issue. It was very demeaning and I can tell you that if I had to put up with that as a city staff member, uh, for any length of time, I would be looking for a job. And if, if a council member is allowed to behave that way in our community, it means that we cannot keep the best and the brightest talent in our city staff, and we certainly will not attract good people. So for that reason, I, I hope that there's further action where maybe uh, Mr. Schleswitz would step down entirely. 
Uh, that said, I really appreciate all of your attention. I'm, I'm extremely impressed at uh, the council members and their activity. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Next is Ms. Stephanie Otto. Good evening. My name is Stephanie Otto, and I live at 26 Via Dinola, Laguna Niguel. And I, wa I don't have to say what I was going to say, and I'm glad for that. Um, but I do just want to offer my support. I can imagine, as a former councilwoman in Florida, I can imagine what you all have gone through. Um, so I want to give my support, and I especially want to give my support to staff, too. Um, they are just as important the success of our city. You guys know that. Everyone here seems to understand that. I love the comments from the last gentleman that just spoke. I, he, he said everything I wanted to say. My main concern was about how are we going to attract good talent, a good city manager. So hopefully we can move forward with that. And you have my support. So thank you for your service. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Steve DeVore. Good evening. Steve DeVree, Tenman Murray, Laguna Niguel. Uh, nice to see Terry Dixon. I've been a citizen of Laguna Niguel since 1986. I worked on the original community council. I worked for City Hood Drive. Almost got arrested one night because we put up posters. We won by, what, 86%, I believe. Higher. And I worked on the original inauguration and the parade. And I see what happened here tonight. It was very emotional to me also. And I'm proud to be a citizen of this beautiful city. And there was a cloud on the city. And I read it in the paper. And I heard from people back east hearing about the story about looking in a gal. What is happening in the city? I had explained I had to be here tonight. I drove over that bridge the other day, and I remember going to that building back there. It's probably going to be redone one day. And I remember the swearing in of Pat Bates, Larry Porter, Jim Krembis, and Paul. It was a big day for us. I think you guys cleared the air tonight. And I'm really proud to be here with you guys and support you guys 100%. If you need my help, I'll be here. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. And last and certainly not least, I can't read it clearly. Paul or Dave? I apologize for butchering your last name. Welcome to the city of Laguna Niguel. Uh, I've been here for a long time. And like Steve, I've, I've been also a member of the city council uh, city hood campaign committee back when. Anyway, I don't want to deviate from my, from my uh, script a second. I fully support what you are saying recently. I, I, oh, I'm we sorry. Hear you clearly. Sorry. I fully support what you said recently. Um, few minutes ago. That's uh, the sentiments that I also totally embraced. So I'm glad that we are back to that format again after what happened in the last few weeks with our former mayor. Anyway, uh, in the six month uh, regime as mayor, uh, Mr. Slasovics managed to terrorize our city staff, whereby not only the city manager and the assistant city manager resigned on the same day, but a number of other employees, city employees, indicate their desire to uh, resign as well. By comparison, our first uh, city manager uh, retire after more than 20 years of service for the city. 
uh, at a special meeting of two weeks ago, I watched the performance of our former mayor and uh, um, his, his behavior towards city employees is, is totally unacceptable. Um, also, the treatment of his fellow council members is downright disrespectful. Uh, there's more. He threatened and demanded a quid pro quo arrangement with two different business entities, namely the Community Theater and the United FC Soccer soccer team. As council member, he demanded a rebate from a local carpet store owner. You have 30 seconds. Oh boy. He uh, refused and, and he became so angry that he was ready to call, uh, to call 911. Uh, 30 seconds. Huh? Okay, let me skip through then. Um, He appeared, he appeared to have the tendency of, of initiating corrupt arrangements and many other uh, unsavory practices. This basically disqualify him as to represent our residents as a, as a, as a council member. In other words, his politi political career in Laguna Gal is over. That's your time. One sentence. To that, to that end, I'm asking our city clerk, uh, Eileen Gomez, to tell me the, how many signatures are required for a poor ballot initiative. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I just want to make sure we have no more speakers requests. There are no more speaker requests. Ma Very good, thank you. At this juncture, Mr. City Attorney Terry Dixon, what's the protocol? Should we adjourn the meeting to tomorrow night to a regular meeting with the right setting, with the right uh, approach, or we should be conducting the election of the mayor pro tem tonight? No, it's not on the agenda. So therefore, my recommendation at this point would be to adjourn this meeting. And then tomorrow night will be a regular meeting. Very good. Thank you very much. Excuse me. Um, when do we swear the mayor in? Maybe tomorrow night too. Tonight I'm not. Yeah, I can do uh, it tomorrow. This evening. is not the night of ceremony. I. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could do it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Very good. Do I have any comments from my colleagues? Do I have any comments from the city staff, city manager, interim city manager, representing our police chief? Our city attorney, Terry Dixon. All right, it's not a usual meeting. So with that, the meeting is adjourned to tomorrow night at 7 p.m. And I look forward to see you all here. Thank you. Thank you.